Hi guys, welcome back to part two. Part two of our hypothermia water immersion videos. By the end of this video, you are going to know how to safely help somebody out of a cold water situation. Obviously 911 first, but we're gonna talk about how we can help, how we are properly packaging that person, and then how we're gonna treat hypothermia until 911 gets there. Let's do it. I'm Savannah from Real Rescue Life. I'm a firefighter, a first aid instructor, a business owner, but most importantly, I'm a mom. <laughs> Here at Real Rescue Life, we share home and family safety tips in hopes to grow your confidence and knowledge for a safer community. We like to remember the 1101 rule in the fire service. So what that means is a person has one minute to actually catch their breath if they fall in a freezing cold water situation. So one minute to catch their breath, they have 10 minutes of meaningful movement. Now that's 10 minutes of meaningful movement and catching their breath in one minute with some type of flotation device on. So 10 minutes of meaningful movement, either trying to swim to get to safety, getting on top of an ice shaft or grabbing something and holding onto it for dear life. So one minute to, to catch your breath, 10 minutes of meaningful movement and one hour to survive until hypothermia sets in. And unfortunately that person probably is not going to make it, but that's kind of the rules we go with, one, 10, one. If somebody falls in water, what we need to do obviously is 911 needs to be on the way. There are a lot of steps that we as civilians are not going to do and need EMS there to help us out. What we want to do after 911 is called is grab something to be able to assist that person out of the water. You yourself will never go in that freezing cold water to get that person out. What we talk about when we're rescuing someone from a body of water, our first resource is to try to reach them if we cannot reach them with an object, then we will throw something to that person. But your first option is try to use something to actually reach the person. So a couple things that you could have around the house, if you have a body of water close to you, especially if, if you have a pool, there's a lot of things that you can use. The number one easiest would be if you have a ladder on the side of your house, you can potentially extend that ladder out and the person can grab onto it. We don't wanna use a two by four or a big long stick, let's say, to try to get that person out of the water because their dexterity is going to be gone. All they're gonna be able to do is actually hold on to something. So using either both arms and including their body weight, kind of just to latch on to things. You need something that they're able to do that. So a ladder would be perfect and safe enough that we can keep extending it and with some help, pull that person back. Next thing, pretty simple, would just be a shovel. You're not gonna have a huge reach, but it's something, all right? Again, be very careful with these. Make sure if you're a rescuer, you are wearing some type of flotation device. We can also use pool cleaner. So that's gonna work too. So same thing, send them the scoop. It's gonna extend out too, so they can put their arms inside that and we're gonna be able to pull them back. The next thing we actually have in our pool just to separate the shallow end from the deep end for the kids is a bunch of pool noodles on a rope. And that's something that we're gonna be able to actually throw to somebody if they need our help. And again, there's something that they can loop their arms into to just a rope by itself. Make sure you put a loop in it so that they can actually hook their arms onto it because they won't be able to use their hands. Our bodies are amazing machines. So as our body is protecting ourselves from hypothermia, we have vasoconstriction and shivering happen. So all of that blood is going to our core. And what actually happens is people can get a fever from being in that cold water because our bodies are so effective. A human's body temperature normally runs at 37 degrees Celsius or 98 degrees Fahrenheit. So any variation going up or down will either cause hypo or hyper, meaning they're getting too hot or they're getting too cold. 
knowing that that person is hypothermic, just looking at the situation, if they are still shivering, that's a really, really good sign. Their body is still fighting, trying to get them um, into survival mode or keeping them in survival mode. Signs of going from moderate to severe hypothermia, what can happen is their level of consciousness is gonna change. So when they're going into severe hypothermia, there's a good chance that they could lose consciousness soon. They eventually will stop shivering because they've gone unconscious or also their body is technically shutting down because everything is freezing. Once we do get that person out of the water, as best as we can, we wanna to try to keep them horizontal, laying down flat. We don't want them to actually be doing any movement. If you can imagine their heart and their body is freezing, so all of their blood has gone to their core, those extremities aren't working, they're nice and warm, but their heart after a while, because it has been so affected, it's not gonna be working properly. So having the person sit up or any activity to try to self-rescue isn't gonna be effective. What can actually happen is the heart's just gonna start fluttering and boom, the person could drop on us. So be very careful once we do get them out, keep them horizontal and you and I will do all the work for that person. Once we actually get the casualty out of the water, again, do not let them do any work. As helpful as they want to be, don't let them. We are very worried about their heart. We're worried about them going into cardiac arrest. The least movement, the better. This person is not going to move or sit up or move around or anything like that until they are at a hospital and the doctor says it is safe to do so. So we want to keep them in the same position. Now that we have them in the tarp, we also want to give them some kind of warmth. So we were able to grab our camping bag, lots of layers, as many layers as you can, keep their wet clothes on, try to bulk them up, keep them nice and warm, then wrap them up in the tarp. So once we have them all wrapped up and safe, we're gonna get them back to someplace warm. So you're not gonna take any clothes off or the vapor barrier until we're get, able to get them into a warm environment. Once we are back inside, we're gonna open up that tarp, take off the sleeping bag and cut off all of the soaking wet clothing basically until they're naked. And then we want to start adding some nice, thick, loose layers. Do not stick the person directly in front of a fireplace, wood stove, or any type of heat source. Remember, they are hypothermic, but their skin is also frostbitten, so severe damage could happen. Do not vigorously rub that person's skin. They are so fragile, so be really, really precious with the person. Any little heat packs that we do have, again, be very cautious to put it directly on their skin, but anything that we are warming up, we're gonna warm up the trunk outside surface of them, and then from there, warm blood will start moving around their body in a safe manner. Last but not least, if we do have that person and they are unconscious when we pull them from the water or they do go unconscious, when you're doing an ABCs check, so your breathing check on that person, you want to actually check for breathing for 60 seconds, a whole minute to give them enough time because they are so hypothermic, things have really, really slowed down. So Thanks again for watching guys. I just wanna to touch on again the fact that you have to call 911. We do not want anybody going into the water. These are things that, you know, if you live right beside a lake or a river, yes, these are things that you might do. So we just wanna make sure that you are completely prepared. If you learned anything today, give us a like or share this with someone who does live near a lake that could use those skills. Next time you see me on a boat, it better be sunny and hot. Stay tuned for next week. Thanks again and uh, keep safe. <coughs>